Oh Lord. Our Lord. How excellent is thy name. All the earth. Thank you for last night's slumber. This morning rising. Thank you for leading us to this place at this time. God, this is your house. We are but guests here. But we are gathered in your name. You said where we are gathered, touching and agreeing, that you would be in the midst. So God, you're here. We give you. Have your way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my Lord. You are my Redeemer. You are my strength. I bow in your presence and acknowledge that you are God all by yourself. And I can make it without you. In the name of our living name, the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Book of Matthew chapter 4. Book of Matthew chapter Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said for him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. Shall I serve? Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. Well, the thought for your mind, evidence of a spirit filled life. Evidence of a spirit filled life. Are 
Father to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, respect to the office of this church. Blessing the Parliament Choir, the musicians, and all of you, my Father's children. God is good. Respect to my wife and my daughter and son in his absence. Evidence of a spirit filled life. Everybody talking about heaven and going there. For some people, all they do is talk about heaven. But Jesus said, Many shall come in the last days, saying, Lord, Lord, and shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they did not do the Father's will. God's will is more than just you talk about God. Do more than saying that he is good. You must show that he is good by the way that you live your life. Is that right? Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 8, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Did y'all hear what Paul said? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Stop saying everybody is a child of God. Everybody is a creation of God, but only those people are children of God who have been born into the kingdom. For Jesus has said in the book of John chapter 3, Marvel not, I say unto you, you must be born again. It is not good, it is not right for a Christian to say every man is a child of God because every man is not a child of God. Every man is a creation of God, but only the children of God are those who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord. And so you've been put on notice. Don't, don't say that kind of foolishness because really it's blasphemous. When you go contrary to the word of God, you're blaspheming the word of God. You Spirit of God. That's what God said. The question today is, do you have evidence of a spirit-filled life? Paul said in the book of Ephesians, he said, be not drunk with wine. If you have never been drunk with wine, you have experienced the fact that being drunk with wine will change the way you act. Being drunk with wine will change the way that you talk. Being drunk with wine will change the way you think. But see, being a Christian, Paul said, but don't be drunk with wine. Because wine will make you act a fool. Wine will make you think a fool. Wine will make you speak a fool. But instead, Paul said, you ought to be filled with the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God will make you act a Christian. Huh? The Spirit of God will make you act righteous. The Spirit of God will make you speak what pleases the God. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth because that which is pleasing unto God and it is fine to the people that hear evidence of a spirit filled life. If you want to walk on the streets that are paved with gold, you must have the spirit of God. You must be born again. Your religion cannot do it for you because there are many people who think like they're saved. They talk saved. They, they seem to think saved, but their actions lie or tell the truth on their lying conversation. Why? Because the Bible says unto us that you got to walk up right before the Lord. When you walk up right before the Lord, the things that you used to do, you don't do them no more. Why? Because the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That's what the 
Bible says. Evidence of a spirit filled life. Have your name on the road of the church. There's no evidence of your salvation. Huh? You got to have more evidence than you joined the church at an early age. Because if you join the church at an early age, it ought to show up in your attitude. It ought to show up in your gratitude. The Bible says that everything that have breath in what? Praise the Lord. What the Bible says. The Bible says everything give thanks for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. What does the Bible say? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Who are you following? Evidence of a spirit filled life. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, Jesus is giving his testimony, Brother Pugh, of having a spirit filled life. And somebody will say, Well, preacher, my name ain't Jesus. Did you not hear what Jesus said? He said, Deny yourself. He said, Take up your cross. He says, follow me. Then the devil will tell you it's not possible, but if you read the Bible, the, the, the Bible said you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The same life that Jesus lived, you have the power to live. If you've been born again, if you've been born of the water and spirit, if you have died to yourself and not living for the Lord, What the text say? Verse 1. The text said, So few then was Jesus led. Huh? That's what the text said. He was led. He, he didn't say he was led of his flesh. He didn't say he was led by his mama. He didn't say he was led by the preacher. He said he was led of the Holy Spirit. Huh? The spirit led Jesus. What spirit is leading you? There are really three spirits. Huh? There's your, your own conscience. Huh? There is the devil. And there is the Lord. Huh? Well, there's really four. The Bible also says the spirit of the one. The word. What spirit is leading you? I, 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 I can, I can, I can, I can about tell which one it is. All I have to do is sit and listen to you for a few minutes and you're going to tell me what your sympathy is. You're going to tell me what's important to you. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaking. If you're of the devil, you're going to speak like a devil. If you're of the world, you're going to speak of the things of the world. If you're of yourself, you're going to talk about yourself. But when you talk about Why 
did the Spirit lead him to the woman's place? It's right there in your book. It said, Brother Carter, Jesus was led into the wilderness to have a meeting with the devil. Huh? Is that what you're going to say? Huh? He said he was led uh, of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. And some of you, amen, were worried about the devil. But if you feel with the Spirit, you ain't got nothing to worry about the devil. Because the Bible said, Sister Justin, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It don't matter if the devil be it because you got the power in you to make the devil leave you alone. You got the power to make the devil run away from you. But the Bible says, submit yourself. Therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Don't tell me what the devil is doing in your life. Tell me how you're dealing with the devil. And when you tell me how you deal with the devil, then I know whose side you're on. Because if the devil got you, amen, that means you and him buddies, y'all going in the same direction. But when God got you, hallelujah, you don't walk with the devil. You don't talk like you used to talk, like the devil talks. yourself in a verse because you were there before you get to heaven you got to be tempted of the devil before you get your crown you got to pass your wilderness test huh? when you see Israel going through the wilderness they got to pass the test if they want to reach the promised land and you might say well who was in that wilderness the same one that was in Jesus' wilderness. The, the devil was there. The Bible don't mention him by name when they're walking through the wilderness. But the same devil that tested Jesus was testing them. The same devil that tested them and was testing Jesus is testing us. God is allowing us to be tested so we can improve our fitness for glory. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going. Everybody talking about there will be glory after this. Know what they're talking about because the only way you can get glory, you got to pass the test, you got to endure to the end. Because the Bible said, Don't let endure to the end, then the one that's going to be. He was led to the devil, but before the devil came, before the devil came, Sister Watkins, there was some work that Jesus had to do. He had to learn how to draw close to the Lord. Do y'all see the intent? He fasted. And why was he fasting? He was getting himself out of the way so God can have the right way. Some of us are stumbling over ourselves because self is still in the way. When we, when we say self, we're talking about your flesh. Uh, you obey your flesh more than you walk by faith. And when you obey your flesh more than you walk by faith, you're going to be stumbling like you're drunk. And the reason why you're drunk because, hey amen, you're still drinking wine. And some wine ain't got nothing to do with the liquid that you pour into your body. Some wine is that you're tasting of the world. David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusteth in him. But the truth is, you're going you to taste whatever you trust in. If you trust in your money, you're going to find yourself drunk on your money. You're going to find that's what you're going to talk about. If you find yourself drunk on your family, you're going to find yourself talking about your family. If you find yourself drunk on yourself, you're going to be in the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the time of the law. You're going to be talking about yourself and putting the drunk on the law. You can testify about the good news of Jesus Christ. So the Bible said, let us know somebody. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So it bothers me when you call yourself a Christian, you ain't never got nothing good to say about the Lord. Jesus, Jesus healed folk and, and told them don't go tag, but they had to take heaven. They would have told it anyway. How can you keep silent when you know that God woke you up this morning? When you know that God is the one paying your bill? When you know that God is the one who put a roof? How can you keep silent? He 
He fasted. Do you fast? When you tell me, Pastor, I'm trying to grow closer in the Lord. I'm trying to grow stronger in the Lord. And, and some people, you say, y'all pray for me that I grow stronger in the Lord. Well, you can't get stronger until you exercise. Uh, if you want to grow stronger in the Lord, you got to exercise. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, what did Paul say? Study to show yourself approved. When you're reading the Bible, you're getting your what? Exercise. The Bible says pray without ceasing. When you pray without ceasing, the Bible says, man, I have to always to pray and not to faint. What are you doing when you pray? You're getting your what? I'm getting my what? Exercise. Hello, somebody. When you learn how to fast and, and move your belly out the way. When you learn how to move your belly out the way, you can talk closer to the Lord. Can I, can I tell you what that means? You can be so full that you don't feel no need of God. You can be so full that you're full of yourself. And you can't be full of God and full of yourself at the same time. Somebody got to move out the way. If you don't move out the way, God will move out the way. But when you move out the way, God will move in. Evidence of a spirit-filled life. I want you to see what's going on. Because some of you right here in the text, and you don't know it. The text said he was hungry. And everybody in here is hungry. And we ain't talking about just for physical food. Somebody in here hungry for companionship. Some folk married is still hungry for companionship. I say what I say. You don't feel like your, your spouse will love you like you deserve to be loved. I, I mean, you hungry for companionship. You want somebody to appreciate you. You want somebody to talk good to you. You want somebody to speak kind words to you. You want somebody to say nothing up in here. Yeah, everybody hungry for something. Somebody hungry, amen, for some, some, some significance. That was somebody. That made you want to feel like you are somebody. That's why you always look out, looking at other folk and what they got in wondering how they feel when they drive in their new car, wondering how they feel when they get in their new house. But baby, you ain't got to have no new car or new house to feel like you. Somebody, I'm somebody because I was made in the image and likeness of God. The Bible says the naked I came into the world and naked I shall return. My, my junk ain't got nothing to do with my joy. Hell, somebody, in his presence, in the form of joy, I don't need folk to pat me on the back. Brother, why 
And brother, Jesus, Jesus was hungry because he had had that tea for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil come in your weak moments to exploit your weakness to try to get you to find another way of saving yourself. And when Jesus was hungry, you become the devil. The devil knew he was hungry. The devil used your weakness against you, trying to make you turn against the one of God. And the devil said, Sister Mason, Sister Mason, 
The devil is a relentless devil. Jesus put a word on him one time. But look at him. That devil don't give up. Amen. Not till he see that you're real and what you're talking about. Not till you see that you're real and what you say you believe. That devil not going to give up. He can tell when you don't believe. He can tell when you're not sure. He can tell when you wish to watch it. You got to stand on the word of God. You tell somebody, put on the whole arm of God. That you might be in a stand against the wild of the devil. The devil wants you to thank God. He don't do it for you. Thank God he
But Jesus got out of his feelings. Y'all see what text said? Jesus did not let his feelings guide his decision. Some folk get mad at the church to leave because they got their feelings hurt. But the Bible said, if somebody offends you, put your put your offer down. Don't make it right. Still running. Right. What did God tell him? Who made 
made your mouth? Who made your legs? You're walking with? Who made your feet? You're moving with? Who made your tongue? You're talking with? Was it not the Lord? 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 Was it not the Lord?
some witnesses but don't have a true testimony. Right. You've got to have the evidence for the spirit for your life. Yeah. You're still tearing folk down. You're still holding grudges. You're still hating on people. You're still lying and gossip. There ain't no evidence of spirit filled life. That's evidence that your daddy is the devil. Right. Yeah, but your, your daddy is the devil got a place too. It's called hell. Ain't nothing good down there. If I were you, I wouldn't go. But if you don't want to go to hell, you got to go to Jesus. And the thing I like about it, his arms are wide open. He said, come unto me. All ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. You got rest? 
we're talking about that Sabbath in Sunday school. The Sabbath day was for rest. It was for rest. But it was also for restoration. What they say, he restored my blood. When I fix my mind on him, he powers me up. Are you saved? If you're not saved, you need to be saved. Will you come? They bump and say, why the blood running on me away? Feel bad, Slyther? You know you ain't done what y'all do. Why don't you come? They even find himself a bad slide, didn't he? Say, Lord, blot out my transgression. Hide your face from my iniquities. Purge me with his son. got joy, the book says it's because of his salvation. They know not how much money you got, how big your house is, and how many friends you got, how people love you. The book says it's because of his salvation. His salvation brings you joy. You ain't got no joy away from salvation. Because in his presence, the book says it's the fullness of joy. You ain't got no joy. You feel the presence. The presence is not the spirit of God. The presence is the spirit of the enemy. He says he called you to joy. The book says rejoice evermore. Again, I say rejoice. So if you got a spirit of depression, you're not walking with God. You don't turn your face from God. You're trying to fix it yourself. And if you decide, you find that it's not working, that's why you feel it down in the dumps. Because Jesus will never let you stay down in the what? Dump. Even a Christian now can get in the dumps, right? But they can rejoice what? Anyway, because David said, Why have I cast down on my soul? Why am I disquiet within me? And, but he didn't finish right after he said, I will get hope in the Lord who is the help of my countenance. David said, I feel bad, but I'm still good. Why? Because my heart and mind is in his hands. He's going to take care of me. He's not going to leave me in this place. He's going to pick me up. He's going to turn me around. He's going to set my feet on solid ground. I might be going through, but he's the one going to bring me out. But when you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got no way to get out. You got to get out by yourself. And that's why you feel the beat down. That's why you feel like nothing working for you. Why? Because you're dependent on yourself. You can't save yourself. Only Jesus can do that. God, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. I pray for my Bible here. You know I pray for her every day. Most of the time, twice, even three times. For this is my charge that you put on me. These are the people that you perceive fit for me to come and under shepherd. I'm too weak for the job, but you just right to help me do the job the way you want it to be done. And it's your will that these people be saved. It's your will that these people have the evidence of a spirit filled life. But the text says that they don't have the spirit because they don't belong to you. I pray for the salvation of every person under the sound of my voice and the witness of the spirit in their life. Because once that spirit is within them, they can't walk the same. They can't talk to the same. They can't think the same because you make them real. Have your way in this church. Have your way in our lives. Not just at this building, but in our homes, in our hearts, in our jobs, whatever we, whatever has anything to do with us. Give the glory out of it for yourself.